I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I was born into, the church I loved with all my heart and taught my children to believe in, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I knew Joseph Smith was a prophet. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. I didn't start out challenging my belief in the church. Believe me, this new look at things has been gut-wrenching. I know there are those of you out there watching who are in as much turmoil as I was. But I hope that God will lead you to the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I'm really pleased tonight to uh, welcome Russ East, who many of you will know that name and his voice. From He's the station manager at uh, 820 AM, The Truth our radio station here that we can't live without, so we appreciate it. How long have you been the man station manager there? We started in July of 2008 here. here really? In Utah. Yeah. And had there been a Christian talk uh, station like this before? Not quite like ours. Ours is, is all Bible teachers, Christian talk shows, and also, to my knowledge, no other station is quite like AM820. Wow. Yeah. And do you, are you, do you participate in the selection of who gets on the... A little the bit. I, mean, there, there's, I, I try to, I try to listen to, to the people of Utah, you know, and find out what is it that they're really needing and looking for. Okay. And I try to give my suggestions. Wow. So. Well, that's exciting. I'm sure our audience, many of them, will know you as, uh, as they hear Russ East uh, all the time on their 820 station. So we appreciate you coming. Well, Russ awesome. East, in addition to being the station manager, is also a former Mormon. So uh, the reason that you're on the program. And of pioneer heritage, is that right? How far back do, right. you, do you go? Well, you know, my mom's side goes back um, four generations. Wow. So I, <laughs> she, she grew up in Provo. Yeah. And um, so I can remember hearing stories of the, the pioneers, the pioneers and coming across. And we were family. part of that somewhere in there in those, <laughs> yeah. in those groups. Yeah. So was your family active pretty much when you were growing up? And well, you went to primary yeah. and you got baptized and all that stuff? I would say we were somewhat active. We weren't super active all the time, hmm. but I, I remember uh, when you know Pioneer Day would come, and I'd dress up like a pioneer and put my <laughs> brother in a wagon, and we'd circle around the the yeah. ward house, you know. Yeah. And I was involved in scouts, and okay. I had a CTR box, and I had a little chart that said, "How do I measure up?" Oh you yeah. Know? Yeah. I remember I remember doing my uh, my uh, tithing to the bishop. I get a dollar a week allowance, so I remember bringing him a dime. Yeah. And and I thought a lot about you know going on a mission someday. So I was a committed little boy. Yeah. You know, Just... you know this church. Now my grandfather, though, on my mom's side, um, her father, he was a polygamist. He wow. he ended up being part of a group in Utah that that you know broke off, and I I don't know all the details exactly, but. Uh, some some horrific stories, as, as sad stories about that whole choice that he made. Yeah. So we distanced ourselves from from my grandfather on my mom's side. But um, did he stay in Utah or did he go to Canada? Or he stayed in Utah. Mexico. He stayed in Utah. Yeah. Wow. He had two wives, so we oh. just kind of steered clear from him. But I, but uh, yeah, I can tell you a little later, a little, <laughs> some some interaction with him later yeah. in my life. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, 
what happens then as you're growing up then? You do, do right. take seminary kind of stuff? Never or? went to seminary. Oh. I, I, when I was baptized, though, I remember when I was eight years old, I yeah. sat in the office of the bishop, and my father was there, and I remember them asking me, um, you know, do you believe that Joseph Smith was a true prophet of God? Book of Mormon is true. And I said, yes, you know, without any hesitation. I, I uh, Because it had just been drilled into you, do you think? Or did well, you feel you like know, you had a testimony? I, I believe that was true. It didn't, yeah. it didn't seem to be too far-fetched. I, I like the idea of the pre-existence that we yeah. were with Heavenly Father beforehand. Yeah. I like the idea of um, Jesus wants me for a sunbeam, <laughs> Book of Mormon stories yeah. that my teacher told to me, yeah. Lamanites across the sea and you know all those stories just they made, they made sense to me yeah um, when I was baptized I was baptized three times uh, some people might find that kind of interesting because uh, the first time my toe was out of the water yeah. and the second time my head was out of the water and the third time my whole body went under the water you got it so, fully immersed yeah yeah, yeah. yeah we used to, well they have witnesses there to yeah, watch I that, the witness so, there yeah. that so tell us what happens a little later on in your youth well as I'm going on, I remember asking a question in, in Sunday school class. I can't remember what the question was, but I remember the answer was, Rusty, don't ask, why do you ask so many questions? Stop asking so many questions. I don't think I was being annoying or anything. I just had a few questions, you know, as a eight, nine-year-old boy. Things you didn't boy. understand. Yeah. And, yeah. And so that really stuck with me, you know. And then as time went on, I remember going to Mutual and for, for high schoolers, you know, junior high yeah, age. Yeah. And I can remember just basically hearing so much about the temple, hearing about the prophets, and, but I didn't have any type of assurance that I had a relationship with God. I didn't have my sins forgiven. Now, I felt really forgiven, really clean once I was baptized. When you got baptized. Yeah, that felt great. I, that, that was probably the, the closest I felt to God, you know, in my life being a Mormon person, yeah. you know, being a Mormon. But as, as it went on, I can just remember wanting that same experience that Joseph Smith had. And I didn't, I didn't see oh, him because he, mean, he got to meet Heavenly Father. He got yeah. to meet Jesus And you wanted that face. same experience? I thought, well, if he can have that, then why, why am I being denied that, at least that feeling or yeah. experience? And I remember, you know, we had a Bible my grandmother had given me. And my, I remember... You know, my family didn't really read the Bible together or anything, but I remember the book of Job was something that we went through during difficult yeah. times. And so as time went on, though, I just never had that peace. I never had that assurance that my sins were forgiven, that I could know that I'd be in the in the presence of God when I died because of the three degrees of glory, you know. Yeah. My, my parents weren't sealed in the temple. So I can remember coming home from church. I can remember distinctly, you know, just kind of running into the bathroom and locking the door and just having some moments of tears, crying, because my parents weren't sealed and there was no assurance that my my wow. eternal destiny was going to be with them. Yeah, because let alone they weren't sealed. They weren't sealed, right? So I didn't. I never had that that type of security. Plus, you weren't even sure you were being forgiven of your sins. Right? Is that yeah, what that, you're that saying? Was, yeah, that was never. You're always trying to be good, yeah. you know, but you never know. Are you good enough? So, so what enough. happened with the prayer? Did you go? Right. Well, I, I'd seen pictures, you know, of Joseph Smith out sure. in the woods. So I did the same thing. <laughs> I went back behind my house, and I knelt down. And this was in the summer of 1979. So beautiful day, sun glistening through the trees, and oh. creek is flowing next to me, just like the pictures. <laughs> and here I am. I'm 14 years old, and Joseph Smith Perfect. was 14 years Perfect. old. Yeah. And I literally knelt there, and I looked up, and I thought maybe the two would come down and talk to me. So I waited for about 10, 15 minutes. If any of you lack wisdom, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? And so um, I waited and nothing happened, nothing happened. Oh. But in a, in a sense, something did happen. Um, shortly after that, probably a week or two, I was doing what I would normally do in the summer, you know, go around, take the, the lawn mower, go up to people's homes, knock on their door, hey, do you need your lawn mowed? Hmm. So I came upon this house and it was the home of Madeline Grinstead. And um, this lady happened to be a born-again Christian. Oh. And she started just asking me questions like, well, do you have a church you're going to? Um, and I told her, yes, uh, we're Mormon. You know? And she said, well, why don't you come visit our church? And so I was like, well, I'm not really that interested in that. But she said, oh, what's your, what's your mom and dad's phone number? I want to give them a call. See, and if, so, see if you can come. Yeah, yeah. Where was this at? This is in Santa Rosa, California. Wow. Northern California. So. So on Montgomery Drive, and so 
you know, there. So, so now, now I've given the phone number, and I don't know what's going to happen, you know. But the next thing I know, I think the next Sunday, we're in the car, and we're going to visit this church. <laughs> and they have a Christian school in association with this church. So that was one of the things that probably Mrs. Grinstead told my mom on the phone. They check out hey, they the got school. a school, they got this church, you got to come visit. So we went, and I remember it being so different in many ways one of the things that was different going to that church first service it was a communion service and so they handed out little you know little cups of juice opposed to the water yeah you know that i would take in sacrament and the bread they were little flat pieces of bread not uh, like unleavened, type, unleavened yeah. bread and not like leavened bread like wonder bread um so and, and i remember when they passed the communion the the, the elements i i took it quickly like they would like we would do in the earliest yeah. church but in the Christian church everybody waited until the pastor took it took it you know and then oh. they all took it together so my whole family we all just kind of we kind of were out of sync you <laughs> yeah. know and um, you know the, the, the songs had a certain type of a um, uh, I guess you could say like a a deeper meaning to them you know they had like I was going to say soul to it. You know, it had, it had a soul to it. It had. I, I think of it as more worshipful. Yeah, Would worshipful you think that? and more, more real, and just everyone was worshiping and, God with it. Yeah. It was. It was so you noticed that even as a mm -hmm. young person. Yeah, yeah. And, wow. the, and the message of salvation was given uh, at the end of the service by a very enthusiastic pastor, Pastor Robert Graves, who's with the Lord now. But oh. um, I heard this message of salvation, but it just sounded a little too easy to me. It sounded like, you know, he had missed so many things. He didn't mention anything about the golden plates, Joseph Smith. Going to the temple. Angel Moroni, the temple. So I'm listening to this whole story, and it sounded good about Jesus, but it just didn't seem to work for me at that moment. It just didn't. Yeah. It sounded way too simple, that I could just put my faith and trust in Christ alone, and then know I'd be in heaven. But then we went back again to that same church. And I'm sitting there in the pew, um, same gospel message is given, and this time, for some reason, it all made sense. Well, because the, the, I guess maybe the fact that it was a gift, that was the part, I'm sure he said that the first time I heard it, but that it, idea of it being a gift, this, that salvation was a gift. This grace that Christ has mm -hmm. given us is a gift. And that really just made sense. And I felt kind of selfish. You know, like, yeah, I want that gift, you know? Yeah. It's just, it's just like, that's what I want. I want forgiveness. I want a relationship with God. Why not? Yeah, I'll do it. So, so he said, you know, if you, if you really mean it in your heart that you believe you're a sinner, that you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, this is all you have to do. This is, he, 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 he said it is finished. So raise your hand if you've, if you've prayed along with me, this, this sinner's prayer. And I started to do that. My brother next to me, a couple years younger, he felt my, my arm going up as I was raising my hand. And he said, what are you doing? And I just told him to shut up. Because <laughs> I was going to do this. You know, I wasn't letting anybody, I didn't yeah. want him to, to keep me from doing this. So um, after I told my brother to shut up, I accepted Jesus into my heart, into my oh life. My and it was my Lord. And... Um, and I felt that weight taken off of me. I felt that sense of truly being born again. The pastor, you know, came out of his office after the service and all excited. And he, had, to you. he talked to me just for a few minutes. I met some people at the church there. And then I went to go talk to my dad because I wanted to know, you know, why haven't you told me any of this stuff before? <laughs> and uh, I had, I just did what that pastor said to do. But um, he said, well, I've done it too. Your dad had yeah, said that? Yeah, my dad. He said, I did this too. But, you know, he didn't want to quite tell the whole family because sometimes in, in the Mormon church, there, if one person decides to leave the LDS church or doesn't show strong, you know, beliefs strong, in it, yeah. the, the two will part. You know, a divorce can happen. He didn't want that. Right. So he didn't know quite what to do. So I understand that, you know. So he yeah. had already, he had been born again? For about or? two years. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And uh, it was a business friend of his that shared Christ with him. And so my dad had done that. Um, so then what I did was I went home after that and I went upstairs to my room because now I'm a little confused. I'm not sure. sure. I, I, oh, know, yeah. I know that I have done something that was definitely biblical and that was something way different than the, what the Mormon church had ever taught me. Yeah. Um, but then I thought, well, should I still be a member of the Mormon church or not? Yeah. That maybe I just missed it with them too. I don't know, you know, but <laughs> I, I took the Bible my grandmother had given me 
and I just flipped it open. I just, I just didn't know where to read. You know, I just wanted God kind to like speak to get me. God speak to me through the Bible. Yeah. And, and so you I will... took it, flipped it open, and, it, and I'm not kidding. It opened up right to Galatians. Oh boy, chapter one, yep. verses six through nine. Mm -hmm. And I was going to bring it tonight, and I forgot for to, for this for this show to show you the Bible, because I circled it, and it says, in Old King James English, it says, I marvel that ye, are, that ye have, um, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that, that oh, I can't remember how, how it goes in Old English, but it basically says, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have the received. we are an angel. Or an angel, any preach man. Preach any other preach, gospel. And let him be accursed. Yeah. You know? So I started reading like verse 6, 7, 8, 9. And it and just, just opened tears, up. A tear started to flow. And I realized I did not need the Mormon Church because when this was written, it was before Joseph Smith, and so absolutely, I thought, well, Paul, this man Paul, was writing to warn people in the future about other types of messages before Joseph Smith. So I just had to put two and two together to realize that what I had now was Jesus alone, and I didn't need the Aaronic priesthood, being a deacon. I wasn't even a deacon, but all the levels, all the pomp and circumstance, all the titles all the things all the do all the list of things that wasn't what it was all about because you knew it was grace and it yeah. was a gift right and you can't work for a gift right <clears throat> if it's a gift it's a free gift and now i knew that i could serve him because of my relationship with him now i could do it out of love not out of trying to prove myself not trying to, to earn your way him. to yeah. right it's like it's like the ideas i thought about it more recently it's like when you try to if you try to pull vault over the Grand Canyon, you know, it's impossible. Some people might get far, farther than, on a human level than others, but you're never going to make it across. It's impossible. Everybody's going down. Right, right yeah. So that is, oh, um, that's, that's how I got saved. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. And you were 14 years old. Right, right. And uh, did you share this with your mom and, and, yeah. and your dad? I mean, yeah. you, well, your dad said that he had been... Born, was he pleased that you'd had this experience? Yeah. Did you talk about it? Yeah, yeah, he was. What they, about your brother and your other family members? They all just, you know, I, they were all interested in it, kind of. I mean, yeah. it was, it was, it was a little awkward. And then the other, you know, cousins and aunts and uncles, and you know, the word card started getting out, and it was, it was definitely something that was wow. rocking the boat. Yeah. You know? um, did you but, feel? Um, ostracized or I mean did you a feel little like bit, that, yeah a little bit from from some family members but it's just understandable and that's hard as a young person yeah, isn't it's, it it's understandable I mean I think yeah. people in Utah have it even so much more difficult you yeah. know people that might grow up in Utah and 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 then become born again and have to deal with the whole state of Utah and, and all of those things you know and all so the, I, the I, culture I can, here I can, yeah I can empathize a little bit. Now you mentioned yeah. earlier that you were concerned about these sins that you were weren't, weren't sure you'd be forgiven of and of course your father and mother not being sealed in the temple but did this help answer those questions for you oh, about of sins? Well yeah I mean I, I just... And explain why that is uh, well, for, because for the audience. Well you, because you, you go to a certain level of heaven depending on how good you are. I mean from a Young person standing in the Mormon Church. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you never know. I mean, if you lie, if you steal. I mean, I stole a comic book. I stole a candy bar. You know. Yeah. Oh, and now where did that put me? You know. Yeah. And, did that drop me down? And then I yeah. went to church. I went back up a little bit. Right. And now, what do you understand about Christ's sacrifice on the cross? Well, he is the only person that could satisfy the holiness of God, the the justice of God, the mercy of God. I had to place my complete faith and trust in what he did for me. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd be lost in my sin. And so, um, <laughs> because of that, you know, now um, positionally, I'm I'm clean. I'm I'm. He's I'm, paid for I'm, all of our yeah, sins. Yeah, past, I've been rescued. I've been rescued future. from my state. You know, yeah. of, of sinfulness. You know, so. Well, now being a young person, I don't know what your relationship was with was with the Bible, say before. You were born again, but did you notice a difference with that? Uh, well, what was nice was, um, yeah, after I got saved, I started going to that Christian school. That I was, was going to ask if you church. kept going to the church yeah, at yeah. Santa Rosa In church. Bible class, I asked question after question. And now here... They weren't telling you to... No, they were, saying, they were answering my questions, you know. And my youth pastor, he would answer my questions. And sure, you know, I would tire him out, you know. But I just had a lot of questions, yeah. you can imagine, right? So... Um, 
I remember growing up, though, I did have like a, a Bible on record, you know, one of the big vinyl records, you know, long playing LPs, you know, so we'd, I'd listen to that sometimes, and, but, but now it was real, you know, now yeah. it was something, and I started going on mission trips to Utah, too, with my high school group, and that's oh, really what wow. brought about me coming out to Utah by myself when I was 19 for a month. I spent a, a month internship working with uh, Ira Ransom, who's a missionary here in Utah mm. still, and uh, this is back around 83, or no, 85, 85. And, um, you know, the mission trips to Utah, the month long here, uh, working with a, a pastor, yeah. um, and then uh, being a camp counselor at Camp Utaba, and that was just the thing that really God put on my heart. He, he just really spoke to me saying, I want you to live in Ogden, Utah. I'm not kidding. I mean, I felt like he just was saying, for some reason, Ogden, this Utah, want you. this is where I want you someday, you know? Didn't know when, but I just felt like that was where he wanted me, so. Wow. Um, now, I, now, you're married. Yeah, I met my wife children. in Southern California. Uh, we went to the Master's College, met her there, yeah. and um, and I just, you know, and so Tammy, she's, I told she's her, Christian. Yeah, and yeah absolutely, yeah. She, she wanted to live a life of some type of, you know, missionary, missionary work, and so yeah. God brought us to Utah. We got married in 91, and um, so, you know, she grew up in a in a, in a strong Christian home. You know, yeah. her father was Jack Wordson, who started a big ministry on the East Coast, mm. Bible Bible um, institutes all around the world and wow. camps and things. And so she was ready to do something like this, you know, like going wow. to. I didn't know quite what, but I wanted to see, by God's <laughs> grace, Utah change. My my heart was just to see Utah change. It just it it just seemed it was too overwhelmingly controlled by you know, the teachings of the LDS Church, and yeah. I just wanted them to be freed from that and know Christ. You and know? you knew that now, I'm sure you've studied, and you've probably studied more now as a, as a Christian than you ever did as a Latter-day Saint. I mean, you know about masonry and yeah. the temple and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, uh, and you mentioned that, that you came here to Utah, Tell us just a little bit before we run out of time about some things that you sponsor here. You bring youth groups over. Yeah, well, and I had invite such a good, them to come. Yeah, I had such a good experience bringing teams out to Utah, or, yeah. or, or excuse me, going to Utah as a high school kid. Right. Well, I just wanted to multiply that. So we started our own ministry, a 501c3 ministry called Utah Partnerships for Christ. And we started in 2000. Um, we bring out teams from around the country, and they we train them ahead of time at their location. We travel out there, so we've had teams from Alaska, California, New York, uh, Texas, just all around the country. Teams generally um, youth, youth right? Groups, yeah, youth high groups. school and college yeah. students. They come to Utah, and we, we we put together an itinerary that fits them, and we we do all types of different like outreach. Um, we, we might go and go door to door and invite people to maybe a new church, like a church startup, you know, a yeah. startup plant, a church plant. Um, we will invite people to come to our little facility, the Blue House up in Ogden, mm. it's a little house right there that, yeah. where we house the teams, and we'll feed people dinner. We'll go to the Mormon ward on a Sunday afternoon after we've gone to a Christian church in the morning. Really? And we'll go there for three hours, and then we'll ask the Lord to, to open up doors so we can invite people to... And do you get good, yeah, interesting responses, few, I guess. Yeah, we get a few people that will show up, you know, yeah. and we'll be able to interact with them, um, share Christ with them, ask them questions, build a relationship and all. So. Well, so let me... Uh, I, I wish we could spend even more time. You've got a, a great story, and I... Uh, are, are Mormons Christian? Well, I mean, here's the thing. Mormonism, there's a difference, you know, between Mormonism and a yeah. Mormon, because you can be a Mormon technically and be born again saved, you know, so I want people That's to true. know, uh, so, so on a real technical basis, you know, yeah. um, I want to make that distinction, you know, someone yeah. can be in the Mormon church, be a Mormon, and, and they can have had a Mormon a, personal, a personal relationship. experience, you know, a, a real encounter with Christ. But Mormonism and, itself but Mormonism yeah. has a different Jesus, and they yeah. have the idea that God the father is an exalted man so so we're talking about two apples and oranges here yeah, we, we're really not talking is. about s the same god in the that's in the bible and, and you share this with these youth groups and try to right. teach them how to are very many yeah. of them conversant with mormonism when they come you know a little bit and yeah. we, we we spend that time doing some but training ahead of time yeah. and we give them books and we give them good materials dvds and things and yeah it just for a lot of these kids it's their first mission trip so 
we want them to get a little bit more grounded so when they go home, they can interact with, with people when they get invited to the dances or the yeah. missionaries come to their doors. They'll be able to talk to them in a loving, kind yeah. way, you know. But isn't it wonderful that they have the freedom and we now have the freedom to be able to look at anything we want, to study. Yeah. Uh, we're, not, we're not fearful of what comes down. Uh, you know, we're, we're grateful for what the Bible has to offer us. Well, we've got just a little bit of time left. What do you say to the LDS people? What would you, right. if you've got a few minutes and you'd, tell the LDS people something, or what would you say? Well, I would say the next time you're given an opportunity to, to read something that's the other, the other side of the coin, you know, there's two sides to every story in a sense. I mean, you, you, can, you have the freedom. You have a, a, God's, God's not going to push himself on you, but don't be intimidated by the people that you've grown up with. Be respectful, of course, but, but take time to really investigate because truth won't fear investigation. If you can't trust the Book of Mormon geographically, don't trust it spiritually for your eternity. Check these things out. Google Zarahemla, Google Lamanites, Nephites. If it's real, then go on and trust it spiritually. But if it's not real, then my, my, my challenge to you is, is to ask you, how can you trust it spiritually? Well. I really appreciate your testimony and, and uh, all the work that you do and this outreach program with the youth. I'm sure that's having an impact. Have you had some good responses and thank you letters and stuff from people, I'm I think sure? God, God just, he, God will use anything that we do when we're obedient to him, yeah. you know, and you see the fruit over time and, yeah. and it's a good thing, you know. And so. how wonderful that your family, your children, and you enjoy church. I mean, do they, yeah. do they enjoy going to church? And yeah, yeah, we, we go to um, Ogden Valley Community Church. It's a good, solid Bible teaching church and we, we love it up there. And, and, so. and the kids yeah. enjoy going. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, I really appreciate you, yeah. you being here, and yeah, thanks thank so you. much. And, thank you. you know, I, I just want to remind everybody, we, I mention it from time to time, but this is truly, a, as, as uh, Russ mentioned, this, this is another gospel, right? Mm. It just seems like another gospel. Everything that you look at, uh, it's the gospel of Joseph Smith, and uh, you need to be, we, we need to be following the gospel of Jesus Christ. Good night. See you next week.